Okay, now that I've got the record button hit, <laughs> happy Friday, people. <laughs> yeah, I just hit the button. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Now get my window set back up again. Okay, so um, like I was saying, I, I got a new book. I'm going to take a look at that. This was published, I think, in November. And then I'm going to show you guys, uh, when I used to teach altered books, this is um, one of the books I used as to, um, to teach with. So let me um, do that. Let's go through this one first. This book is put out by Stampington, um, the folks who put out Somerset Studio and Art Journaling and you know all those good magazines. This was published in 2005. And it it's mostly to look at. It's like one of the art books that you look at. Okay, like a coffee table book kind of. And it's, it's really, really cute, and it's got a lot of, let me get the book, uh, my camera's crooked. Oh, big surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, warning, this video may cause shopping, okay, just, just a little, little warning there. <laughs> but anyway, um, Angela Cartwright, um, put this book together, and, uh, this is some of her work, she's, She's uh, worked with photography um, and doing things with photos for a long time. So we're not going to do, I mean, they, you know, they frown on doing, um, you know, close-ups of this. But this is some transparencies. Um, a lot of these pictures, you can't tell that it's a transparency, and that kind of gripes me. But, you know, um, it's still fun to look at. Okay, let me thumb through it this way because that's kind of hard. To, to do but um, there's not really a how-to it's it's more or less I did it this way um, and I used you know sometimes they'll give you steps but they're not really telling you much um, I will warn you about that they're not really telling you a whole lot um, some of the stuff that they tell you it, it kind of skips over and assumes that you know certain things and that's fine you know but it's it's good inspiration it's really good look at the little houses aren't those cute with the windows that's adorable now so you can tell that's a window it looks like a little tiny shadow box and I really like that idea looks like a little tiny shadow box very cute hi Lisa you know Barb's got me on those little houses now <laughs> And I did find a bag of blocks, rabbit trail. I did find a bag of blocks um, from the girls, the grand girls. So I'm going to be uh, doing those. Um, oh, those were, let's see, who did this? This is uh, Carol Owen. Um, not really heard of her, but um, nice work. Nice work. This is Nina Bagley's work. I love Nina Bagley's work. She's so 3D and grungy. I love it. Uh, let's see, and there's some more. Here. But anyway, this it gives you some ideas on how to use transparencies, and there's a lot of little windows, a little house too. That's cute. Very, very cute. Um, some Christmas ornaments, and of course the the um, slides. Always do with the slides. I made my mom a set of magnets with slides, pictures of the family, and me as a little girl playing with my little toy kitchen. And let's see, one of me playing my little toy piano. <laughs> I was like four in those pictures. It was a Mother's Day gift. Hey, Dee Dee. Oh, look at this purse. And I'm assuming that there's acetate pockets. Um, you can't really see it because they try not to put the glare on it when they take a picture. But that was cool. And you can stitch. I mean, there's so many things you can do with transparencies. That bag is just so cute. And mix it up with fabric. Mix up the transparencies with fabric. That's that's cool too. Now that you can really tell it's a transparency because you can see the text through it. And it's really... Um, this is Michelle Ward. I know you guys have heard of her. She's been around a while. 
but it's it's really hard to tell from these pictures you know a lot of them that it is a transparency um, that one you can tell it is because I mean, it's obvious <laughs> and these you can oh this is kind of cool that's a nice one wow this is by Amy Blandford that's really cool I like that fireplace neato and like I said, there's not too much instruction. Um, it's mostly for inspiration. I have that graphic. <laughs> of course, a lot of people have that graphic. Around that time, it was uh, all over the internet. Yeah, they put out a lot of um, copyright free. See, here's one there. Everybody's got that one too, just about. But it's a you know a lot of inspiration. You you know, uh, transparencies you can make them out of anything, and I'll I'll uh, show you some things like a vinyl tablecloth. You know anything like that can be used as well and stitched on. You can paint on it. Use markers on one side and then the other. Yeah, there's a lots lots of possibilities. Um, and yeah, my muse is waking up now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> like I was saying, I mean, I'm having a hard time with this time change. There was something I wanted to show you. Oh, here's another little house. Okay, see this one right here? The transparency is the roof. The roof on it. That's really cool. And it hangs. She's just got a string and it hangs. But that was really cool. I wanted to show you guys that one. It's a little mobile. That one's by Heather Crossley from Australia. But this book is just full of neat things I mean you just and you don't even have to think about the you know transparency factor there's just lots of ideas um, Angela Cartwright yes lost in space yes and Danny Thomas yeah what was that show called um, my mom said I used to watch that and I do remember some of it uh, what the heck was the name of that show <laughs> was it just the Danny Thomas show Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. But I watched every episode of Lost in Space when I was little. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Yes, I'm sure they still publish this, yes. It's a really nice book. It's There's no time limit, you know, on anything in here. It's very, very uh, um, current still. Yeah, so nice book, very nice book. Okay, now the new one I have, I put this down somewhere. Okay, now this was published, I think, in November, and this is put out by Courtney Sherudi, and it's a quarry book. Courtney Sherudi? Maybe it's Sherudi. I don't know. I'll let you decide. There's her name right there. You decide how to pronounce it, because I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I got it through Amazon. <laughs> really nice book. Love it. Okay, so she, oh, one thing, she has a, if you look her up on YouTube, her intro for this book or promo for this book is beautifully done. I mean, that is the, oh, it's very, it, it gets you, um, I want to do this right now. You know, it, it gets you excited. It's, it's the things that she does. It's beautifully done. I mean, she's walking around and she's doing different things and you see her in, her, in the environment and, and things. Oh, it's just beautiful. Just beautifully done. Y'all have to go look that up. That is just so gorgeous. And I, I had been seeing her name before I even saw that that uh, that video, but I just happened to click on it from somewhere. I don't remember where I was or what I was looking up. But anyway, um, she has a lot of um, instruction. This is the book you want for instruction. Let me get it in the camera here. Okay. So um, she's got your materials and the different things you can use to make transfers. Um nail polish remover, um, xylol. Of course, you guys know about the, the xylene pens, right? The colorless blenders that you can use to make transfers, but these take toner transfers. I'm going to concentrate on inkjet, okay? Because I don't have a laser printer. I don't have access to a copy shop even. So, you know, so I'm going to concentrate on inkjet. 
Um, and she's got various things, you know, packing tape and gel medium and, and that kind of thing. Okay, so we're going to go over some of that. Uh, so a quick peek through, okay, packing tape transfer. Everyone knows how to do a packing tape transfer. Uh, we're going to go over that real quick. This is the blender pen where you put your laser uh, toner down and you go over it with the pen, get it wet, rub it, and then peel it back, and then you get your transfer that way. I'm not going to be doing that because it smells, and I'm in a small room. Not good. <laughs> I also am not going to be messing with the acetone, um, the nail polish remover. I'm not going to be doing that in here, but, I mean, you guys have seen that before. The gel skins, okay, I won't be doing that either because I didn't get one prepped, but it basically works that you get your gel medium, and we all use the golden matte medium. And this one is, ooh, it's almost empty. The golden matte medium. Okay, that's the gel medium that you would use. And you would spread your, just grab a brush. You would spread your gel medium on your substrate, both directions. And you lay your, your um, toner copy into it. And you burnish it and you let it dry, etc., etc. And then, you know. I mean, there's ways, different ways of doing it, but that's the basic way I used to do it. Acrylic paint transfer. Now, I've never done that, so that's that's going to be fun. But anyway, let's go a little faster through here and get to some art making. And she's got, you know, ideas. And she shows some projects, too. And this is making uh, fake Polaroid pictures. That's kind of a cute idea. This one is on a piece of wood, I think. I don't know if that... Anyway, um, enhance your sketching. So if you have a sketch, you can add a transfer onto it. Um, of course, on glass. Votive candle holders or whatever. And the slides, the, you know, the usual on the slides. Transfer to a canvas with the gel medium. And she does a lot of that. Okay, making magnets, and I've already done that. Lots of ways to do that. Um, oh, uh, on fabric. So she's made a bunting on fabric. Shows you how to do that. Um, labels for jars. Uh, just clear with, with black. That's kind of interesting. Okay, that. Make your gift wrap, shows you how to do, make your own kind of paper ribbon. Um, and this is another transfer, what is this? This is um, a gel medium transfer on a piece of, to a piece of metal. Okay, that's what she's doing. Okay, so transferring to a piece of metal, and I've seen that done before. Uh, transfers to sketchbooks, I've done that. And you can enhance the transfer after you're done. Envelopes. Piece of wood. This is a. This is the um, acrylic paint. So you paint on it and then you transfer into it. That's kind of neat. I'm gonna have to try that. And more fabric because she gives you a few projects. Circles. <laughs> typewriter tape. So put your tape in the typewriter and type on it. Now I don't know why that's a transfer. Hmm, why is that a transfer? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently I didn't read that one. Okay, hmm. All right, anyway, and there's a gallery. Of course, there's all kinds of inspiration in the gallery. So this is kind of cool. Yeah, it's really inspiring. It's just so many different ways. And then, of course, art to borrow. Make your copies. She lets you use those guys. Oops, one more. One here. There. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, reversed. Okay, and then there's a resource guide in the back for supplies, and you know, Michaels and Dick Blick is in here for heaven's sakes. <laughs> and contributing artists. There's like a dozen people, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool book. Um, I'm really enjoying looking at it over and over and over. 
Okay, so what I have done in the past with transparencies and transfers, this is uh, magazine stuff. Okay, so this is an altered book. I just took a library book and, you know, did some altering. So, uh, the standard page. There's a transparency here. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah. So, here's a transparency. This is a transparency. This is a transparency. So, there's different ways of doing it. And then, um, I did, um, a transfer onto packing tape here um, with some text and then folded it over to make the tabs so it's that's all shiny too and that's one thing it's another thing if you want if you don't want it shiny then you have to go over it like with matte medium or something um, okay and here's oh, there's a pocket here for a little tag and that's got a transparency on it I don't know if you can let me see. I don't have autofocus on, so I don't know how well we can, you can't see it really. Anyway, it's a picture of my studio. <laughs> so, um, okay, and stamping tissue paper, mulberry paper, copper tape. I mean, I just, you know, all kinds of things in here. Um, a punch, and mulberry papers behind it, um, some magazine images catalog images. Oh, this is one of those Dymo labelers. Thanks, Eileen. Okay, now here's the transparency here. All right. So I just took uh, two pages and put them together with the transparency between and cut it down a little bit. And then I did some copper ink with some leaf stamps. And there's a few stickers. Just, you know, I mean... You guys know how to do this stuff, right? And here's a pocket into I cut into the page. And then there's some little charms on this page and some stickers. And some this is um, a piece of what do you call it? Parchment paper. The kind you cook with? Yeah. So I had already cooked it and it gets a little trans more translucent when you cook it. And <laughs> so takes on its own and then I stamped on it and stuck it in here um, this was just pretty I, I enjoyed that I didn't even tinker with this one I just it's as is <laughs> from the magazine that was kind of cool um, and there's an actual leaf in here I'm not going to take it out because it's a little crunchy but that's from the yard um, I've got a piece of corrugate, some book text, some uh, scrapbook paper, wallpaper there's a little transparency here um, this is a piece of um, seam binding. Um, it's just it's more or less kind of just loose in there at this at this point. There's a coin. Um, this side has a transparency. If I stick my hand under there, you can see my fingers. That's a transparency. See that lady? <laughs> She's everywhere. And see how I was putting my pages together. Okay. And let's see. I didn't finish those, but here's one that's. This is wallpaper again. I love using wallpaper. And those veined, you know, deveined leaves. And this is a slide um, frame, well, part of one, not the other side. But this is a napkin. There's all, I mean, labels, you know, I mean, just stuff, just <laughs> ephemera. <laughs> what you do with an altered book, right? And these are pictures from a magazine. And there's a piece of ribbon. It's got a rose. On the other end of it. Um, here's another transparency where I took words from the page of the book, painted the rest out, and took. Um, okay, so there's two pictures here. One is this is an actor and actress. I can't remember their names or even what the movie was now, but it was a, a movie I had been watching apparently, um, and. That says it's so hard to put into words. I think I'm falling madly in love with you, and then that's you know love theme. Okay, so anyway, there. This was the front of a, a birthday card I had gotten, or a Mother's Day card, or something. And anyway, and then I stamped on that um, the black paper and stuck that in there. Tore it and stuck that in there. And then 
This is some um, bead trim just hung off on the end and uh, stitched. Oh, there we go. I stitched the beads onto to this one. And as you can see, I'm putting pages together. And it's not done. You can it's not done. But that's okay. It served its purpose. Little door. So anyway, you can see the transparencies that I used in here. Um, it's a lot of fun to do something like this. Just, you know, play around. Do what you do. And, you know, use your transparencies. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. So. To do transparencies and transfers, you need transparency film. Now this is the write-on, and these are old boxes, so I don't even know what they look like now. <laughs> yeah, don't even know what they look like now, but it's by Apollo. I got it at Office Max. Um, so one is the write-on transparency film where it's smooth on both sides, and they come packaged with uh, a sheet of paper in them between each one. So the, you can use this in the printer, guys. Don't don't get rid of that paper. It's perfectly good printer paper. Um, so it's smooth on both sides. It's very thin. Okay. This is the one that you use for the transfers. Okay. Transfers. All right. This one is the one for the inkjet printer that you can print on to transfer or make a transparency. Okay. All right. And it comes in the box just like this. And it has a strip on one edge. Hello. <laughs> Get my reflection in there again. Get right there. <laughs> Let me tilt it this way. Now you get my camera. Ah. Okay, anyway, this is the edge that you want to put through your printer. So if my my new Ep, my new Epson, I have to put it in this way. But whatever way your you know yours feeds in, that's what you do. And one side is rough, and one side is smooth. You print on the side that's rough, okay? And you can get your transparencies um, and your tra your uh, yeah your tra your hello. <laughs> transfers and transparencies yeah and on my old Epson printer um, I used the matte heavyweight paper setting with image and text to get my um, to get those transfers okay but I have a different Epson now and it seems to like plain paper setting uh, just on text okay just with text so Every printer is going to be different. You're going to have to do some experimentation and see what yours likes. Okay, now some other things I've used. Okay, here's some other things. Now, this is a palette pad, and this is by Canson. Like, and this one's old, too, so I don't know what it looks like now, but I'm sure you can find it. It's disposable palette paper, and it's waxy. Let me show you that. Oh, oops, crunched that one. That's okay. But it's waxy, so it's got, see how it's shiny on that side? And it's matte on that side. So you want to print on this side, okay? Um, and it comes in, you know, it comes in your, the pad. And this one has uh, 80 sheets, I think. I don't even see where it says that now. Anyway, there's a bunch of them in there, but they're nine by twelve, so you got to cut them down to eight and a half by eleven, so they can fit in your printer. Okay, so what this looks like when you run it through your printer is this, and whatever you do, don't touch it. <laughs> this is our rub-ons. Don't touch it. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna move it so I won't bump into it again. All right. But this is my absolutely favorite, favorite way of making a transfer, is using this palette pad, okay? Another thing to use, and I've got it in a folder, is Sheer Heaven. I don't know if you guys know about Sheer Heaven, but you're going to find out today. 
Um, so I have printed onto a piece of Sheer Heaven on the rough side. And Sheer Heaven comes in a package. Uh, she usually ships it in an envelope. But um, I got it from directly from the creator, uh, createit.com. It's C R E number 8 it.com. And I'll put it up here. So there's the web page right there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it because I don't have autofocus on. But anyway, if you just Google Sheer Heaven, you'll find it. It's not difficult. Um, but I've got a bunch of it in here. Anyway, um, we're going to do some transfers with this too. Okay, I'm going to save that one for the end because it's just a little bit messy. <laughs> a little bit messy. Okay, um, this is a gel medium transfer, and I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. Let me see if I can get the light to show the, because it has brush strokes, and like I said, I don't have autofocus on because it drives me crazy. No, you can't, see, you're not going to be able to see it, but I thought maybe if I could get the light just right. Oh, maybe you can. I don't know. But anyway, this is a gel, it's a gel transfer skin. Okay, where you do it on a surface and then you peel it up. That's that's a skin. Okay. And this is the little book that I was doing on Doodle Week. Um, and I closed it with a twisty because it goes in the purse. Okay. So what I did was, uh, on camera, we did the stencil. Okay, we marked through the stencil. All right. And then I took the stencil with some ink and went through. This can be doodled upon and I'm not finished doodling this yet. So you can see what that looks like. And of course I went around the edges to ink the edges. So I'm not finished doodling this yet, so I've got to start there. So I can see the little dots and the lines and whatnot. Okay, so anyway, doing that. And inside, I've got ATCs, ATC blanks, okay? I made an envelope out of um, deli paper, since I had the deli paper out, and so I, Cut some ATCs out of my Bristol, and I put this in I put this in my purse or my backpack, whichever. And uh, it gets going to get toted around with me. And doodle. Okay. This little book. This is a little miniature. Um, I know a lot. That word just went right out of my head. You know what I'm talking about. Fluffy is made out of the. <clears throat> okay, you guys know what these are. <laughs> okay, brain is not awake. Time change bad. Okay, anyway, there's a transfer. <laughs> there's a transfer under here, all right, and a transparency on top of that, and I have cut it. And I put, uh, let's see, behind it is some pieces, just a collage of scrap of paper and text paper. And then there's a little um, note label from the Dymo, okay, the Dymo. And then I covered the whole thing with contact paper, and this sits, fits in the purse. And that's just a little graphic on the back, too. But anyway, composition book, there you go, there it is composition book and it was in my brain somewhere okay anyhow um, I've got you know things I've torn out apparently and but it's a, a little notepad and then I've got um, <laughs> look at those folks names a little pocket for uh, post-it pads so there's post-it notes a post-it note uh, in there and the back another little pocket for just there's a piece of um, deli paper and a piece of tissue paper and there's some more post-it notes and I just did uh, clean the stamp off on that one um, but you know and you just cover it and put it in your bag and there you go got a little notebook that looks really cute okay so I've been doing some experimenting and I'll kind of explain uh, the experiments here Okay, so I'm wondering what will transfer, you know, what's going to transfer? Hmm, so I started playing with the Dick Blick catalog that came in because it just happened to be on the desk. Uh, <laughs> I 
so I got some stamps and some pins and I was playing. All right, so first of all, um, everybody knows what a packing tape transfer is. You get your uh, piece of magazines or uh, toner copies and you put your you put your tape on it and you burnish it well, okay? Soak it in water, rub off the back, and then you get a transfer, okay? Like so. Now this is a transparency, okay? And I did not glue this down because I wanted to show that to you, but that's going to have to be glued down because it's not going to stay permanently. Anyway, if you can see on here, and I don't know that you can, but maybe, um, I have stamped, I had stamped onto the picture of the pins, I stamped Brintangle on there, which is my YouTube channel, by the way, uh, and it came out, okay? So then I thought, hmm, what else is going to work? So what I used for this, besides the Dick Black catalog, I used the um, archival ink from Ranger to stamp on the on the magazine page or on the catalog page with my magnetic uh, lettering tool here from memories okay so I stamped that three times just to see what it was going to do all right I, I had no idea it was going to actually come out I thought oh, it's not going to come out yet. <laughs> well surprise it did <laughs> then I thought hmm <laughs> So what else is going to work, okay? Yes, National Geographic magazines are wonderful. Yes, their their page, their paper quality, their ink quality is wonderful. Yes, that's my absolute top favorite magazine. Um, okay, anyway, so then I got to thinking about other things, you know, that we could do with this. So let me set that aside since we all know how to do that, the basic transfer. So, uh, I did some more stamping on um, the catalog page and made some notes. And so, what happened was, I took um, Stays On, and you would think that Stays On, you know, as being as permanent as it is, um, would work for this. Uh, no, it does not. Uh, I stamped the little bird, and it did. I need something white behind this. Um. Transfer it everywhere. I don't want to stick my fingers into. Okay. All right. So here's a white page. Let's let's go behind so you can see. All right. So I made some notes and I'm going to read those off. I don't know if you you can't see them, but I, you know. So I stamped the little bird. So there's six little birds. Well, there was seven, but that one didn't work. So <laughs> never mind. But anyway, the um, stays on did not work. It did not transfer. The uh, stays on brown, it kind of did, but it didn't really work very well. Okay, the archival ink works. Um, this is, let's see, um, memories, that works. Stays on, not so much. The ranger again, the archival. I don't know why I did that one twice. I guess, I, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, and memories. The memories work the best, okay? Memories, black ink works the best. That, I, that out of the stuff that I have, okay, out of the stuff that I have and I tried, this is what works the best if you want to do a stamp transfer, uh, state, <laughs> blah, blah, a stamped <laughs> tape transfer. Say that fast five times. Woo. Okay, then I got to thinking about the pins. Okay, so here is what happens with the pins. Sharpie. The pit pens, so the India ink is the best bet, all right? Copic doesn't work so well, and Sharpie not so much. The pit pens work great, and these are, that's the big brush markers that I use, but it's all the same ink, same India ink. So India ink is going to work very, very well. And these are all the, the tape transfers. Oh, sorry, noisy. <laughs> okay, um, I just used I just used the catalog. I had the Dick Flick catalog. All right, so I stamped in the catalog, 
and then I did the tape transfer. So this one was just a plain white paper. This was just a thin plain white paper that I did the markers on. And then I did some stamping with the, the Ranger and the, uh, the archival and the memories on this one. So, oops. And this is just wax paper. Because this got pretty, you know, stayed pretty sticky. But you guys can see how well the pit came out. I mean, that's really, really cool. Um, cereal plastic. Oh, the bags from the cereal. Yes, that would probably work. Um, also, when you use your... Um, I know I had a couple pages from my mailing labels. Yeah. So, you know, from... Mailing labels, that'll work too. So mailing labels, um, you know, anything like that. But to, uh, you know, and then I got to think, well, why, why would I use, you know, <laughs> something like this? Who knows? <laughs> if I wanted to draw something, you know, and I don't have a stamp of something and I want, you know, Maybe that's the reason I would use it. But, hey, I know it works now, right? <laughs> that's the whole thing. I know it works now. <laughs> so if I should ever want to do that, <laughs> I know it works. And I know what works that I that out of the supplies that I have right here. So, anyway, I thought that was just, you know, something I was playing around with. You know, you just never know when you want to do something like that. So stamp, draw, you can use your pens. You know, whatever. Okay, so that's that experiment. And then this one, okay, this is a piece of the tape that I got from um, Michaels. Oh, I can get it off now. Right, um, so this is a piece of tape that I got from Michaels. And if you can see, it has lines through it. Those lines were not there. The tape itself does not have lines. The tape, wherever there's there's a design, is blank. It's clear. Okay. So what I did was I took a. Uh oh. Here they are. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back here. Okay. I took a clothing catalog. Okay, and I don't even know which one this is, but I took an outfit that had the stripes, and I laid this tape onto it and did a packing tape transfer and picked up the stripe design from the shirt. Okay. <laughs> that was just something fun I was playing with. The tape itself. I'm making a mess. The tape itself is clear. Okay. See, there's no design. In the tape itself. Oh well, I don't know if you guys can even see that. So there's no design in the tape itself. It is perfectly clear. Uh, see, I don't know if you can see it, but here, let me just put it. Let me just do this. <laughs> Without autofocus, I'm lost. But if I don't, if I don't take it off, it messes things up. Blurring. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Okay, I'll fiddle with that later. Uh, anyway, this stuff is like packing tape, and you got it at Michaels, and it's it's very thin. But now you can see how this has a stripe design from the shirt in the catalog, and this is how the tape comes. So you can kind of put anything you want to behind it. So that's another use for this tape. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see where we're going now. Okay. I want to do a rub on for you guys. All right. And I've taken, uh, I s usually scan my, my uh, tangles. Let me some of this up. I usually scan my tangles, and so I wanted to see how this was going to work. Now, this is the transparency that's not printable. This is 
This one is the write-on, like you use for overhead projectors. That's what this is. This I printed about an hour and a half ago, I think. So it's been drying. And I wanted to see how long we could go without... Uh, I don't know how long these keep, so that's something I would like to find out right now. So I'm going to tape it down so it doesn't move. And oh, did I tape that right? Oh, shoot. Hang on. <laughs> I think I've got it upside down. You got to have the print side down. That would be helpful. So I think, let's see if I can see where the ink is. I think that's right. Yes, I got it upside down. Okay, so print side down. So you don't want to touch these. Okay, once you get it down there, you don't want to move it. So I'm going to use my blue tape. Okay, now I've got a spoon. Okay, and I like to use a spoon because you don't, there's no sharp edges that it's just going to touch. Okay, so I'm just going to rub and try not to move it. I'm going to go kind of slightly diagonal at first and see where we go. And I did one earlier but I did it right as it came off the printer and I think I just moved it. So you don't get your transparency is scratched up as you do with a bone folder. Okay, let me peek at this and see where we're going. Okay, it's coming off really faintly right now. So let me switch to the other end of the spoon and see if this is going to make any difference. And now I'm kind of trying to go straight up and down as much as I can because I've got the tripods kind of in the way. <laughs> so if I press harder, let's see what that's going to do. And then I think I'm going to turn it and go this way. So this is dried about an hour and a half and I'm thinking maybe that's a little too long. Now the printer I used to have, I could leave it, okay that's not too bad, that's not too bad, let's go ahead and go with this, that's not too bad. Okay, so it's a fainter image than it would be drawn of course, but there's your, your rub on, see how nice that is? And you'd probably put this onto, like, you know, you have a, a printed page or something, and you, you would use that. But my favorite, 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 favorite way to do a wrap on is with the palette paper. Okay, so let me move this for a second. Oh, let's let's tell you what. Let's do one on here. Now, see this. This is the same one that I did, and I did this one in my sketchbook. This is the sketchbook that I do my tangles in, and I, you know, I had already drawn this the square outline, so I just put that on the inside. And I removed it; it smeared, and my printer setting was too strong. So, um, yes, these are all inkjet. Hi, Barb. <laughs> yeah, these are inkjet. Um, I'm, I'm concentrating on inkjet because I have no access to toner, so my my thing is trying to make inkjet work. Okay, oh sorry, my nose is running again. Uh, anyway, it came out all smeared and stuff, so I'm going to have to take my pen and go in and fix it and, and make it work. Okay, so I can redoodle <laughs> the doodle, okay? <laughs> all right. And this is in the uh, hand handbook. Uh, uh, help. Yeah, there you go. Hand book. There it is right there. Okay. So that's what this is. So this paper is really absorbent. Let me, let me put it that way. It's very absorbent. It's not shiny. It's not slick. It's got a little tooth to it too. So that's, that's the transparency in there. Okay. So let's do some experimenting on different, different papers. So I've printed, um, I've scanned some ATCs and I've printed on 
in the palette paper and I'm going to cut these apart because if you rub on it you, you smear it and these are about an hour yeah about an hour hour and a half ago okay so I'm going to go ahead and cut all these apart because I don't want to I don't want to smear them usually what I'll do when I if I have a series of the stuff I print out I will hang them on my vertical blinds not vertical my horizontal blinds my window blinds yeah I'll just um, clip them to the blinds okay so I'm going to cut these apart and they have a line I guess I need to edit that out of that picture out of that uh, <laughs> file I didn't notice that because I've usually done these one by one this time I just let the whole sheet go through so be careful, don't touch them. Or you just mess up your ink. And I'm cutting over here because I don't want to, I'm trying to spread them out. So you guys probably can't even, I mean, not that you need to see me cut paper. <laughs> and I like to leave, you know, some of the paper on there so you got something to hold on to. Okay, those, those, oh, two more over here. Okay, oops. And. I try to scan all my tangles because it's just fun to look at them. Okay, and this in the recycle bin. Okay, which is an empty Kleenex box. All right, so I've cut those apart. And my spoon. So let's take one. Let's take one and do it in this sketchbook. Now, this is just plain sketchbook paper. We're going to compare it to the um, transparency transfer. Okay. That's, that's the purpose of doing it this way. So I'm going to lay it down and smush it, so to speak. Um, blue tape would be good at this point, too. So I'm just going to grab a little piece of blue tape and tape it and tape it. Okay. All right. Now, let's just go ahead and rub. And I'm going to rub it one way first. I'm not rubbing very hard yet. My experience is if you rub it too hard at first, it smears. Okay, now I'm going to go the other way. Oh, watch the tripod legs. Okay, I'm going to take a little peeky under here. Oops, come on. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. All right, rubbing lightly. Not too hard, but harder than the first go round. Okay, and now I'm going to do it really hard. Now, when you do a transfer, what you transfer it to is a factor as well in what you end up with. So, if your paper has tooth, you're going to see a texture. This was everybody's favorite method. It's mine too. Because <laughs> it's so easy and it's not messy. And like I was saying, this paper, see how nice that is? This paper is um, reusable as well. I'm going to stick the blue tape to the desk. I'll use it again in a minute. And there's still some left on here. So let's see if we can get another transfer. So you can see it's darker. Okay, same printer setting, okay, just text, okay, same printer setting, and the paper has a little tooth, so you see a little bit of the texture, but you see how nice it is, it's so much darker than the other one, okay, very nice transfer, and of course I didn't flip the picture, so you got the happy birthday backwards, but that's okay, <laughs> we're playing, that's okay, all right, and this is Epson ink, so I'm wondering too now if, um, we can put wet over that. So we're going to test that out too. And we'll see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can get another transfer off of the same piece. Let me see if that'll work. I'm not sure it will. So let's let's see. I'm going to go this way first. Okay, so I'm going to do really hard because we've already gotten most of the ink off and it's not going to smear at this point unless the picture moves. So I'm going to do pretty hard. And 
it kind of close up, so I'm going to have to turn it around. And this would be good for, if you get a second image, this would be good for like something behind something else. You know, your perspective issue. Okay, a little bit. So this would be like an, a shadow effect. Okay, so if I had drawn a flower, say, or something, you could put a flower behind a flower. That would be awesome. Okay, now the cool thing about this paper is, okay, it's still got ink on there, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's see, just using the other end, pretend we have a bone folder. Let's see, just do a piece of it. And yeah, we're still going to get more ink off there. Look at that. We could still get more, more prints, okay? All right, but the cool thing about this paper is, let me grab something here. Let me the whole baby wipe. Okay, so, all right, ready? <laughs> Check this out. Come on. <laughs> Is that awesome? <laughs> reuse your paper. Of course, you don't cut it up. <laughs> you can reuse your paper. And clean up all the ink. Dry that up so not in the water. We don't want to be in the water. And you can dry it off. Stick it back in the printer. Awesome stuff. I love this stuff. Okay, so. Oh, and save your little pieces because the stamping. Hey, let's try that. Let's try, oops, let me packing tape. Let's try stamping on this paper. I didn't try that yet. <coughs> oh dear. Hmm, sorry. I'm having a little sinus problem. Okay, yes, this is a palette paper. Yes, my favorite, favorite thing. Okay, so let's try stamping. Ah. There's some little Prima stamps. <laughs> little Prima stamps. They have not been used yet, so come on. Boop. All right. Let's just, this is what I grabbed, so this is what we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to use the memories because that seems to be the work the best. Let's do the memories. And I need to test the stamp out first. Oh, yeah, that's great. These are Prima, and I don't know what the little thingy is, but it's like um, a sheet of numbers with a little postage stamp and then a little label thingy. So that's what that is. Anyhow, let's try, and of course the text on that's going to come out backwards, but that's okay. So let's print a couple of these on the palette paper. All right. Let's clean them off on the scrap over there. Okay. And this is the memories ink which actually really surprised me that it transfers. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, I can kind of see it raised on here. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to let it dry for just a second. You don't want it too wet. I'm going to let it dry for just a second. Hey, Marie. Bridget, or Bridget, right? No. Hmm. Hi, Nancy. Blissful Crafter. I can't remember what your name is. I want to call you Bridget, but that's not right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm working on it. <laughs> I've not been online too much, so I'm <laughs> trying to get back. Okay, so now I'm going to rub, and we'll see what we come out with. There it is. Sure enough. Okay, so if you have a very textured surface that you don't want to or can't do a stamp and you want it to come out nice, look at that. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, the advantage of transferring a stamp is if you have a really textured surface, like you do, um, here, let me show you for an example of a a really textured page. Okay. For example, whoops. <laughs> Using, uh oh, bumping this. Sorry about that. Prime camera's probably crooked again. Um, a really textured surface like this that you did a 
spackle through a, a stencil, you could do a rub on on this. And I may actually do that now. That I'm, this isn't finished yet. This is one of Donna Downey's classes. Um, not finished yet. But anyway, um, so see the spackle, you know, highly textured. So you could do your rub on on that. And we may do that. Let's see how much time we have. Let's see. How much energy I've got. <laughs> okay. So that works as well. Now, where'd that baby wipe go? Let's see if it comes off. Oh, pretty much. Pretty much. I think the ink is wanting to stay there a lot more, but you can still see an image. But I don't think it's going to print anymore. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So, but that's a reason that you would do a stamp. That's it. You know, and like I said, I'm just playing around seeing if this stuff works because I'm curious. <laughs> so now I know that works. Okay. Put that aside. Now, where was I going? Um, oh, yeah. I was going to do different paper. Okay, so we've done it on the sketchbook paper. And we're going to let these guys dry because I want to see what we can do on top of it. Okay, uh, I have an envelope here, and I want to see if I can get the transfer onto this envelope. And you put it down and don't move it. Put your artist tape down. I probably should use more pieces, but, you know, get in a hurry. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, I'm going to go softly at first, one direction, and I like to use my spoon because there's no sharp edges involved. Okay, go the other way, push a little harder. And I find short strokes work better. Your paper moves a little bit less. Okay, let's take a peek over here in this corner. Oh, doing very nicely. All right, now yeah, one more time. don't touch it because there's still ink on there. Look at that. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so it works very well on envelopes. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is a piece of paper that came in packaging of some sort. So I'm going to just add this to it and it will eventually end up in an art journal. So I'm going to do pretty hard now because we've got most of the ink off of it. And I'm not going to do both directions because if this is a hit and miss. It's going to be background anyway, so I really don't care. Oh, there's not so much on the brown paper. Okay, not so much on the brown paper. We'll do, we'll do one of those on it and see what happens. But I want to try the deli paper. Now let me see which side I've got. I think I want the uh, matte side instead of the shinier side of the deli paper. And let's see what this will do. Now this is the third time, the third pass on this one. And then the shorter strokes do work better. And this is the kind of thing that you can take with you. You can add this to your journaling kit. So your transfers, they can travel. If you 
package them in an envelope, envelope with obviously things between them. Okay, so that's the third pass. Okay, and you cannot glue this down into it because the ink will come off. Now, you might be able to seal it and use it. That's a possibility. But there is the third pass on deli paper. Now, let's do the first pass on deli paper. Let me see if I can get the blue tape off. Use pieces of that again. So I'm going to set this aside. I'll clean it later. Um, find a place to put it down so I don't put anything into it. So I'll either use it again or <laughs> do something else with it. Okay, so I want to do a first pass of one of these guys. So let's see how this is going to work. And this is the non-shiny, the less waxy side of the deli paper. Okay, and you know I'm kind of thinking um, maybe your under surface might make a difference. So I've been doing it on the hard surface because I'm thinking that would help. Not sure. You can always test the theory by doing it on a magazine. And I'm doing it lightly on the very first pass so it doesn't smear so bad. Short strokes, overlapping the first row of strokes. Getting real detailed here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the second way, I'm going to go this way, a little harder. I think three passes, whoops, uh -oh, I might have messed up there, well, let's see. If it moves, I try to lift my spoon up so I don't mess it up any further. Okay, and I'm going to go one more, kind of hard, going this way because I want this one pretty dark, I think. So I'm doing one one direction. I'm not doing DDD, -D -D, I'm doing one direction. Okay. I don't know if that'll make any difference at all, but we shall see. All right. First pass. Oh, nice. Onto deli paper. Ah, do this. Whoops. <laughs> and get the blue tape up. Oh. Okay, well, blue tape says hey, we've been used enough times. <laughs> and I can get a second print off of this. I won't do it because I'm going to hang it up like this with the tape on it. I'm going to hang it over here on the wall so it doesn't smear. All right, now I'm going to take this up. Now, my question about the deli paper is, is it going to smear on the deli paper? And or can you use the deli paper to make transfers? So, okay, here's a test over here. That one's been drying. So, no, that did not come off. This one is still wet. So I'm not going to stick my hand in there. However, let's see if we can transfer some of this onto here. I'm just going to do a little corner over here. Let's see how that works. A little bit. Just a little bit. Not really. Now keep in mind, this is not the waxier side. This is the matte side. Okay? So, we don't know how that's going to work out. We can test it and see on the other side. See if we can do a transfer. But there's the deli paper. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then the advantage of this is, okay, doing your transfer onto the deli paper and gluing your deli paper into your journal. You know, you tear around it or cut around and it disappears, right? There you go. So that works quite well. Let's see, what else have I got? I had. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, so I just had a page in the journal that I had slapped some paint onto. Okay. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, um, but I wanted to see how it would work 
over acrylic paint. Now this is a metallic acrylic paint. So that's going to be uh, interesting. All right, so I'm just I'm going to slap it right there. Just, you know, whatever. I'm just going to slap it down right there, and we'll see where we can go. Okay, so not so heavy. I'm doing it on acrylic paint, so we'll see what happens, which is probably mostly what we would want to do. Uh oh, I need some more blue tape. Yeah, we would mostly want to put it onto something instead of just blank paper. So let's see how it goes. Now this is Epson ink. It's the Durbright. This is a Canson Mixed Media Journal. Okay, now I'm going to do pretty hard the last pass. Let's see how dark I can get it. I already know all the ink is not going to come off this paper. And I'm going to try that one direction thing again. That seemed to work pretty well. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh, look at that. It works. It works. Very nice. And before you ask, the advantage to this is you cannot put your <laughs> you cannot put your journal in your printer. Well, that is the reason to do this. Now, if I wanted to do a series of three across, well, let's just do two. I don't think I have room for three. So let me see if I can line this up, kind of, sort of. I can see through it, so I'm going to line it, line it up next to it and see if I can get another print onto the paint. Okay. I'm going to do harder because we've already gotten our first print. So I'm going to go ahead and do harder. Try not to gouge your fingernails into the paper. It will show. Trust me. I know. I think we're pretty hard. Okay, my arm's getting tired, guys. <laughs> okay, and another factor, we're not on a hard surface, we're in the book. So that's, that's, that's something else to keep in mind. You can always open up your page and put it on your table if it gives you problems. Okay, whoops, hello. Now we should have, yep, there is a fainter copy. All right. Oh, look, the deli paper picked up part of the, <laughs> part of the other one. It wasn't quite dry. Mmm, let it dry. <laughs> oh, we learned something else. Let it dry before putting down the second one. And you could always do a third one if you you know, really want to. Or you could cut this apart even and just use part of it somewhere on the page, which I think is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it apart and just use part of it on the other part of the page because I need, I, I'd like to do threes. So yeah, I think that might be what I want to do. Cut this apart because I've got triangles. Okay, so I could put triangles. Oh yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, we'll do that. That's cool. That's very cool. Okay, so that's what I'll do with this one. So I'm going to hang it up over here on the wall. And I will continue this later after this dries. Uh, did the page have gesso? That's a good question. Yes, it did. Gesso, and then I scraped uh, scraped the paint off of something else. I'm just cleaning. I usually pre-gesso 
I've had, you know, in my books. So, yeah. Neat, neat, neat. I like that. That is cool. Like the way that looks. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, it's on the other side. Nothing. Okay, good. <clears throat> Just got a gesso page. Um, and I don't have anything else show you guys in here. I haven't really, I haven't had much time to art because I've been getting ready for the show, so it's like, that's all I've been doing. Okay, I'm kind of running out of room. <laughs> running out of room to put stuff. Everything's wet. Watercolor paper, ATCs, um, do you transfers onto these kinds of things? These are left from a swap. They're just watercolor and stamped on watercolor paper. Um, you could do transfers onto these. Um, do transfer, since the, well, these are ATCs, but you know, you could transfer onto the background. So let's do that. This is just a this is plain paper onto some junk mail. Uh, I had printed the paper, uh, well, I had made the paper and I printed it. So let's do, I gave this one away anyway, so let's go ahead and see if I can line that up. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do first? I need some tape to tape down the ATC. Okay, I'm going to tape down the ATC. Okay, let me see if I got that in the way. Yeah, of course I did. Okay, let's see if I can just get the edge of the ATC and not get the, where I need to put the corner of the transfer. Okay, so let me get it. I can kind of center it. I can kind of sort of see it. Okay. Like that, and then I'll take this down. Okay, so let's see how this is going to look. And the page I had made and printed was uh, done with Dilutions Ink. When I do a background, I like to photograph it or scan it. I do something I really like. And then reuse it elsewhere. Such as backgrounds for ATCs. See what we have before we move it too much. Oh yeah, looking good. There we go. And it can still smear, so you want to be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and hang this on the wall. I'm gonna run out of wall space. <laughs> uh oh, blue tape's taking up the paper. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I have to use some ink and fix that. And I didn't get it centered, but that's okay because I can add to it. I can add a border or something. Yeah, I'm going to add a border so I can cover up where the blue tape got it. Because this was just printer paper um, Zyroned onto the back of a junk mail. So, okay. Um, let's see. Are y'all talking about Epson? Uh, my Epson was $59. I just got a little photo Epson. It doesn't do everything, but that's okay. I just needed it to print decently. The other printer, the HP, is too old and it just won't do photos or anything like this without putting lines through it. It makes me crazy. Okay, so anyway, there's an ATC. Let's 
with the rub on. Okay, I'm going to put this one up on the wall. Since I haven't used it yet, I've got one, one uh, piece left. But I'm tired. <laughs> it's a low energy day, I suppose. It's cloudy out, too. That's bad. It doesn't help. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions about the rub-ons, the transfers, the transparencies, the printers, the ink? I have no idea what y'all are talking about. Horizontal arm. Oh, for your camera. Oh, okay. For your, okay, gotcha. I was trying to, yeah, I'm trying to read the chat and it's like, what? <laughs> talking about printers and webcams. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that palette paper is awesome. It's awesome. The there are other possibilities to use for paper, you know, for instead of the palette paper. If you have the uh, freezer paper, okay, try freezer paper. That might work um, because it's waxy on one side, right? Okay, so try freezer paper. Keep the backs of your um, printer address label paper. Save those. Um, Let's see what else. Um, oh, uh, st sticker paper backings. Yeah, <laughs> <It's cagey. laughs> Sticker paper backings. Um, you know, basically anything you know waxy on one side. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. I'm gonna try the deli paper transfer and see if I can transfer from deli paper. Um, we'll see. But yeah, so the the most immediate thing is the freezer paper. Give that a try. I haven't done that, so let me know. Tweet me and let me know if that worked. But it should. It should. Yeah. Uh, what do you use for transparency when you wish to keep it on the plastic permanently like you use in your altered book? Oh, the transparency? Okay, that's the one. That's the inkjet printed one. That's this. This is the this is the one that has the strip at the top and it's rough on one side and really smooth on the other. You, you print on this side, the rough side. But this is what you use when you want a permanent transparency. Or you use a tape tra uh, packing tape transfer. So either one. But this is what you do when you want to print. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm done in. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging in. Appreciate you coming by. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, and I'll see you guys at Barb's. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>